All right, YouTube, we're back with another one. And uh, this time we've got some suspension work to do on the 09 Silverado. I wanted to show you real quick, uh, <clears throat> got new tires on it. These are uh, the Falcon Wild Peak ATs, and, or they call them the AT3Ws. <clears throat> They're their all-terrain tire for Falcon, um, you can see there. The size on these is 26570 on an 18 inch rim. So if you kind of like the looks of it, this is probably uh, the better set I've, well, I've only put on one other set of tires on this truck because it's still only got 130,000 miles. <clears throat> but the last set didn't exactly meet my expectations. Those were master crafts. Uh, so I tried these Falcons from a local tire shop and I really like them. I think they fill out the wheel well super well. And uh, I like the look of the tread on them. So if you're like me and you want to stick with the stock rims, you're not interested in buying new rims for your truck, uh, these will fit. And I do have a leveling kit on the truck, so that might be important for this front tire clearance. But uh, no rubbing or anything like that, so they fit absolutely perfect. I almost went with a size bigger with the 270s, and uh, they couldn't get them for like another like two, three weeks. So I said, well, let's just go with the 265s, and I have to admit, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, but today, uh, the reason why we were making a video is not just to show off new tires, um, but the upper control arm on both sides of the truck is bad, and so is the tie rod on the passenger side. So, which was causing a lot of my issues before, I was getting a whole lot of shake in my steering wheel, and I was getting wear just right here on the outside of the tire. Nowhere else, just right here on the outside of the tire. So, <clears throat> ended up going in there and telling them, let's change all four tires and do an alignment, figure out what's going on. Uh, and that's when they came back and said, well, we can't do the alignment. So, what I'm going to do today is replace, there's the upper control arm there that, that some people I've heard call it an A arm. And then down here where you see that boot, okay, uh, that rod that comes off of that, that rod is going to get changed. That's the tie rod. So upper control arm and tie rod on this side, and then just upper control arm on the other side of the truck. So I'll go through a couple things. Um, going to go ahead and stop the video so that I can take these tires off, which is going to be the first thing, jack it up, take the tires off. And then show you a couple things. Uh, watch another YouTube video. Uh, and then read my Haynes manual to see what they recommended and they were both fairly similar but I kind of like the way the Haynes manual uh, described it a little bit better so we'll get into that today all right so wheel off uh, we've got these uh, I can't remember what they're called camber cam shims something like that anyway these things right here they're gonna come off as soon as you remove the bolt you can see I've hosed all this stuff with WD uh, 40 Use whatever you got around the house, uh, PB Blast or whatever. It'll all work. Uh, and then I mark the location. There's a little piece of steel that sticks off of this frame member here, and it goes through this slot. What I did is, there are four of them, and I marked them because not only do you need to know where they line up, but you also need to know what side is the outside. So my little marks are going to do that for me so that I know what size the outside whenever I reapply these. And then the other thing I can do if I want to right now is I could put a jack underneath um, this lower control arm and I can actually lift this up a smidge uh, until it gets the ride height because what I'm gonna need to do is whenever I put this all back together, I have to set this control arm at ride height. Okay, and once it's at ride height, then it's good. It'll stay there and then I can use a jack to lift this up um, this whole, all of this up. Um, also, this sensor had to be unhooked from up here, and this piece comes off over here, and we're pretty much set to go. I did break this bolt at one time, so it actually normally just sits on here with a uh, couple zip ties, which have held up for the past, I don't know, three years or something. They've done just fine. Kept it where I needed to be this whole time. Uh, next thing I'm going to do, you can see how much of this old paint's flaking off of here. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and begin 
loosening bolts. I've got one here, okay, underneath that ball joint at the end. I've got one there, and I have one there. I know for a fact that these are 21 millimeter, so if you have a 21 millimeter, great. If you don't, you have to be like me and buy one. Uh, that's what I had to do today. Also, I have a couple rented specialty tools, one for the tie rod down here, and then I've got a pickle fork to get this ball joint loose here, and I'll show you guys how to use that stuff whenever we get to that point. Okay, so for this next step, what we're going to do is we are going to take this part off first. Something to note here is make sure you do not remove that bolt all the way. Right now, the control arm's under tension. That was something I forgot to mention earlier, and then it kind of dawned on me. I was like, okay, well, I'll go ahead and put that in the video. Uh, the control arm's under tension because of those, because of these bushings back here. So we're going to go ahead and just loosen that bolt up about that much. You could probably go a little bit more. Um, the bottom of the bolt does not have any threads on it, so I didn't want to go all the way down. Next up, we've got our first specialty tool. Some people call it pickle fork. Uh, I think the name on the box is technically ball joint spreader. So right here is our ball joint, and of course if you use one of these, uh, the ball joint boot usually gets damaged so you can't reuse it, uh, but that's not really that big of a deal in this case. And all we're going to do is we're going to pound it in here. You can see this is a rental tool from AutoZone, so you can see it's been pounded on quite a bit here. We're going to pound on it, get it in there, and basically what that's going to do is pop this ball joint the taper out so in all truthfulness I haven't done this in a couple years so let's see how it goes I haven't in fact I haven't done it since I was in high school and I'm probably not gonna be able to video this with one hand and, oh, who knows maybe I can there it goes nice one-handed that's how easy this job is you can do it with one hand so take that out you can see we probably damaged that boot a little bit, but it actually looks okay. Uh, but I have to imagine that's probably a big part of our problem with this alignment right now. And you saw how it popped up. Now the only thing holding it on is the bolt. So we can take that off and uh, it's not going to spring on us next time around. Um, so that's what we're going to do next. Alright, so at this point I have the ball joint portion disconnected. I've got the top, this one disconnected with this. According to everything you'll probably read or hear, this one's the easy one. And I, I do think putting a little WD on the inside of that helped with uh, loosening it up. And then over here, this is pretty much like an unavoidable problem on these trucks. Um, basically, the coil is in the way of the bolt that has to come out. So, for this portion, uh, really what I've seen recommended is to basically get a pry bar in here, in between here, try to separate these coils as best as possible. Uh, and then other than that, there isn't really a scientific method for doing this. So whatever you can figure out. Um, I have a jack underneath this, so I'm gonna try working the jack a little bit, see if I can't get that to uh, change the position of this coil a little bit, and then we'll see where we're at. All right, being that this is my first time doing this on this truck, so I learned something and uh, I want to share it with you guys if you have to do it. I told you this uh, just moments ago, told you that, that you'd have to use a pry bar or something to get this down. Well, it turns out you don't necessarily need to do that after all. If uh, your truck's anything like mine, basically all I had to do was disconnect the outer tie rod here so that this will drop down the rest of the way. And once it dropped down the rest of the way, uh, I literally just shimmied the control arm around like this, back and forth, until the bolt actually just cleared over the coil. So, that was way easier. I was trying a couple other things first, uh, but that hands down is the winner winner chicken dinner. So, if you're doing this, give it a shot. All right, so there it is installed, almost. I haven't put the bolts on. As you can see, I've got to line up these little shim things again, uh, make sure it's set the way it should be set, and tighten her down. Uh, I'm back on pretty easily. Uh, there is a little bit of 
shimmy and shaking you're going to have to do with it. This is the replacement AC Delco as well. So if you're curious about the brand, I got it off of Amazon for somewhere around 90 bucks. Um, the parts at the tire place that I went to, and I'm not going to name names or anything like that, um, but they wanted $800 to do this whole job that I'm making a video about. I'm getting it done for right about $200 in parts. So, uh, and of course, I'm no labor or anything like that. Um, one thing to note on the new AC Delco part is this little opening at the top. That is for a Zerk. All right, a grease fitting. So you can see it there, it's in the package. Also, with these new ones, unlike the old one, it does have a castle nut that goes on the bottom. You can see the hole in there. So if you ever messed with castle nuts before, they're pretty straightforward. Tighten it down uh, until you get to the right torque. And uh, the torque on this is 35 foot-pounds. The torque on these bolts is 140. So if you don't have a uh, torque wrench that goes that high, I did have to borrow My torque wrench doesn't go up to 140. So I had to uh, do that rent tool thing on that too. So um, AutoZone had it though, went up to like 250 foot-pounds. So when it comes time for this, put it on there and then you know, you can put grease in it periodically just to make sure it's good to go. The actual outer tie rod also has a grease fitting on it. And in all honesty, I don't, I've never put grease in it. So that's probably bad on my part, but it is what it is. So anyway, um, that's that. I'm going to tighten these bolts down and then we will get to the inner tie rod next. All right, actually, uh, I got these bolts on, not tight. Uh, as I was doing it, I was like, it doesn't matter if I tighten them down now or not because they need to be at right height. I didn't mark the right height before I installed them, so I'm going to install the tires and then torque them to the specs. I'm going to leave that off for a second. I'm going to go ahead onto the inner tie rod next. And I'm going to show you guys how to remove this boot here. Right underneath here, there's a couple, uh, there's just a hose clamp on there holding it on and we are going to move all right so my last video my phone died or last clip of the video my phone died so anyway catch you up I did a couple things real quick so one I could not get the nut off of the end of the stud so I went ahead and cut it off you can see it laying back there in the video Cut it off with an angle grinder because I'm just not going to mess with it because the new one comes with it. So, went back there to the back. There's a hose clamp on the back of this boot. I went ahead and removed that and I'm going to replace it with a new hose clamp. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide off this hose clamp. So hopefully I can keep this video somewhat still while I do this. I'm gonna keep that. This thing is crazy hot right now, but it's all good. So, hose clamp and boot are off, and you can see here, this is what we're going to be removing. Actually, this part right here. And to do that, I've got this cool little doodad over here from AutoZone. I don't know Unless you own an alignment shop or something, I don't even know why you would own one of these. Uh, maybe somebody at home right now is like, oh, I've got one of those. But anyway, never used one before, but this is pretty neat. Slides on like so. And basically, I'm going to probably not be able to do this two-handed. But it's got these interchangeable little pieces. So this one here is 40, as you can see. That's what's going to go on here. and uh, slide it on there and basically once it's on back in it's got a spot for a half inch ratchet and I'm going to take this old boy off of here and then I'll be able to put the new one back on all right so there's our old tie rod off that's a bit of a challenge definitely needed the breaker bar for it um, then I've got my new part here and I'm going to go ahead and grease it up a little bit on 
this silver part here, put a little bit of grease on it, and I'm gonna screw this back in and torque it down. So, that's the video. Uh, beyond that, I just have to put this part back together here, um, insert it, and then put the outer tie rod into that hole again. Uh, I measured 15 and a half turns on to the inner tie rod so I know about where to put it. There's still an alignment schedule for the truck uh, early next week so they'll I'm sure do a few other adjustments just to get it riding well. And uh, other than that, yeah, everything basically goes back in reverse order. That's pretty much what the Haynes manual says. And then don't forget, um, leave this a little bit loose. And then when you get uh, the tire back on, everything set down, you can adjust it, tighten it down to the right height, 140 foot pounds on that. So, a little bit of a job here, I guess, but basically saved $600 doing it myself uh, with some loaner tools that I'm hopefully won't need for a long time. So there was really no point in buying a tie rod removal set or the ball joint uh, separator and things like that. So you can get all that stuff from your local AutoZone. I'm sure the other auto parts stores are the same. AutoZone is just as close as for me. So, uh, but anyway, yep, that's pretty much it. And it'll go back in the way uh, I took it apart. So if you have any questions, as always, put them in the comments. I do try to get back to those comments as soon as possible. Um, if you have a specific question or whatever, I'll see what I can do. If nothing else, I'll reference the Haynes manual to figure out if it's a very specific question. I'll be able to answer it that way. So, if this video helped you, make sure you like and subscribe.